and welcome to Cheap Joe's Art Stuff. My name is Julie and I'm here to impart some knowledge to you today via a two minute art tip. And today's art tip is basically another installment of Ask Julie. You are welcome to send me questions or concerns or follow-ups about any of the, the segments that we have here. Um, we'd love to hear from you. Um, and uh, you'll often find if you are following our corporate Instagram, uh, at Cheap Joe's Art Stuff that um, we'll often put out an open call and say, hey, um, we're getting gearing up for a shoot. If you guys have any specific questions, let us know. And that's where these um, questions came from. And I thought they were particularly good ones. So we are going to address these two today. The first one is what American Journey watercolor should I get to start out? I already have existing watercolor. I'd like to know which ones to get. And then they were like dot, 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 the fun ones. I've done features on specific American Journey watercolors that are my favorites so far. So I felt like it would be a little bit weird and redundant if I went over those same ones again. But I got lots of favorites. So um, we're not gonna have a problem with this at all. So one of the first ones that I wanted to cover with you guys was raw umber violet, and I have samples here. These are painted from a mass tone straight out of the tube that I applied directly to the paper and then drew them down all the way to the undertone so that you could see the range of each of these colors. And you are welcome to check out all of the data on each of these colors on our website. If you just go to the more information tab, it'll have all of this information as well as if you're in the stores, every bit of this is on the back of the tube. This one is actually a quinacridone color. It has natural iron oxide in it, which means that it's staining, which means that it's not likely to be a great candidate if you're scrubbing out on the surface because it's not going to pick up entirely, but it's transparent and considered a cool color because it has some bluish tint to it um, in the undertone. So this one I enjoy quite a bit. I find that it mixes well um, with a lot of other things um, and it makes for fantastic outdoor landscape kind of colors and stuff like this and wonderful for portraiture because when you um, thin it down to its undertone it makes for great rosy cheeks and you know um, that kind of flush um, that, you know, makes it look so healthy and makes the skin tones not look so dead. So this one I use quite a bit and find that it is a very, very helpful addition to the lineup of what I've got. And I do have samples for all of these colors. You can see them in a practical use, finished pieces where each of these colors are featured in there. All of these are abstracts, but I love them nonetheless. Then our second color featured here is Coastal Fog not to be confused with Pat's Coastal Blue because I love both of them, but they are very different. One thing that they share in common is that they have a generous portion of titanium white in them. They're a heavy color that settles into the tooth of whatever paper you apply them to and they provide a very kind of um, textural element to what's going on. Whereas Pat's Coastal Blue is on the blue gray range this one is a grayish green and I just absolutely love it because it is a fabulous kind of like undertone for things. So sometimes I will put down um, just a layer of this to just kind of set the tone and warm up the paper um, without having anything in particular in mind yet. Um, and because it mixes well with so many fun things, I can do that and let that first layer dry or I can leave it wet in, in you know, in like a, a, a wash and then put a, drop other colors into it. And I absolutely love this color. This one is non-toxic, non-staining and semi-opaque. And the opacity comes from the amount of titanium that's in there. In addition to the titanium it has raw umber and raw sienna, which is what gives it that um, warm earthy, greenish tone to it but the lion a good bit of this is titanium so it does have that kind of opacity and a little bit of mystery to it I, I really think of it as a neutral instead of almost like a color actually but I use it all the time 
all the time. And then lastly, I wanted to show you guys June Bug because I think that this is a super magical color. This one is intense. This one goes a very long way. And as you see, I've got it all over me. And that's just the way it is. Um, I, get, <laughs> I get junk all over me all the time. Um, and because this one has um, a lot of phthalo in it, I couldn't get it off. This one is staining because of the phthalo and also transparent. And it's a mix of Prussian blue, which is one of my favorites and phthalo which is generally not because it is this kind of intense and it gets everywhere but that intensity works well for you because a little of this paint goes a very very long way it is a, um, a commanding color but I love it because it's just not your traditional blue blue it just has this kind of ethereal quality like a jewel tone to it so it just has this kind of command of everything and I just think it looks brilliant next to so many amazing colors like um, our own American Journey Yellow Green, which I've talked about before. Um, I use those two kind of next to each other because I just think that they sing together. And it's, in the mass tone, you can see that they, it is indeed very, very dark. Um, and then you come down and um, the uh, undertone is, is amazing. It does all kinds of cool things. Uh, and I absolutely love this color. So I hope that this answers your question. Um, in the um, extensive library of what I consider my favorite, <laughs> these three are definitely in there, but definitely check um, through our library of two minute art tips because there are feature videos about other American Journey watercolors that I think are fantastic as well, like earth and green and you know um, all kinds of other things that are there for you to reference. So, you know, an expansion of the answer to this question is also found there, so. And if you're, if you're curious, this is a small 4x8 Fabriano watercolor pad that we have picked up, the 1264 line. Um, they are um, really cute and wonderful. So if you're wondering what those samples were painted on, that is what that is. Second question, and this is a doozy, so get comfy. And if you don't have your coffee, you might want to press pause, go get some, come back because um, this isn't two minutes and it rarely ever is, so you don't need to tell me. I already know. This question is, I love Holbein acryl gouache, but would it be cheaper to just use acrylic paint with a matte medium or a texture medium or a drying extender? <laughs> um, would that give me more color and texture options for uh, working in a sketchbook at a lower price? I grow through small tubes of gouache so fast. I don't know that it would be cheaper. Um, the Holbein Acro Gouache is, um, it, it, it's, th those are all, those are small tubes, um, but it may be that what you're going for, yes, could be satisfied with an acrylic instead of a gouache, it just kind of depends on what the finished look of what you're doing is. Gouache, if you're not familiar, is basically a watercolor. So it has the gum Arabic traditionally as the binder mixed with all opaque pigments versus watercolor that traditionally have more transparent pigments. So those are the two differences. Those two are like cousins. It's the same binder, but gouache has opaque pigment in them and watercolor has transparent. Now the acryl gouache that, that sh this person is referring to is basically an acrylic resin binder um, with uh, opaque pigments in it. So gouache, but not the same kind of uh, binder um, it's a much, you know, a much different binder than what you're used to with a typical gouache. Gouache and watercolor are very highly pigmented and they come in a very, very small tube because the thought process generally is that you wouldn't need that much because such a little bit goes a long way. Well, you know, here at Cheap Joe's, we kind of don't follow that line of thinking because like we were one of the first ones out there to offer like the larger 37 ml tube of watercolor because sometimes you want to go a long, long way and sometimes it takes a lot of paint to get there. So, um, but you know, traditionally, if you look at it and can do some math in your head, you can walk the aisles of any, you know, art retailer and see that 
watercolor traditionally and gouache also are, are some of the highest price per volume um, because they're so super densely packed with pigment and, and stuff like that. So um, they are a little bit more expensive. Now, to answer many, many, many uh, of your questions here, um, I would say it depends on the finished look that you're going for. Yes, you probably could, by volume, come out um, with a similar effect with mixing a matte medium into a um, acrylic um, that you're already used to. Because, like, basically, the um, Holbein Aqua Gouache is an acrylic that just has, you know, opaque pigments in it. So you actually could take not necessarily a texture medium, but a matte medium and, you know, cr you know mix that together to get the same finish as a gouache. Um, however, you'll need to make sure that the opacity is there that you want because the finish isn't really the, the issue. It's the coverage and the um, opacity that you're looking for. So you need to kind of select colors and be very, very deliberate, deliberate about selecting acrylics that had opaque pigments in them and that would cover like that. Um, now, when you're looking at, uh, r you know, really good acrylics that'll do that and then the addition of the um, matte medium and stuff like that, you, I mean, you're getting into an issue where it could be fractions of a penny of difference and all of that mixing could be, you know, kind of a waste of your time for any, the nominal savings that you're seeing. So maybe it would come out cheaper, but I, I, you know, I would say with the addition of the mediums and, you know, especially if you're adding a texture medium and adding a drying extender and, and all this kinds of stuff, then you're getting further and further away from that, that goal, um, as you'd say. But um, I would just say if, if the cost is making it so that that is prohibitive, then you might look at um, some acrylics that would satisfy that. Um, and you may also find some um, acrylic available out there that um, already you know, has a matte finish uh, and stuff like that. But you will need to select your colors with um, the, the opaque pigments in mind. And you should be able to find that information generally on the tube or the bottle. So lots of lots of questions packed in, in that question and I hope that I was able to answer your question effectively um, please keep them coming we, this isn't a one-sided conversation we want to have an open dialogue with you if you have questions for me feel free to send them on you um, free to send them to cheap Joe's through email um, the comment section um, of any of the videos that we publish here and I ch um, check in periodically and try to answer as much as I possibly can uh, or you know go on Instagram send us um, messages uh, through the accounts and we'll be glad uh, to answer any questions that you might have so thank you for watching and we hope that you enjoy thanks for joining us for another installment of two minute art tips right here at Chief Joe's Art Stuff we hope you enjoyed this video and maybe learned a little something. If so, give us a like, comment with your thoughts, and share with a friend. Subscribe below and don't miss a single two-minute art tips and help us reach 150,000 subscribers. See you next time.